Hey everyone, I am here with Team 587, the Hedgehogs. And with me are Timothy, Murillo, and Lumen. We are going to talk about the awesome robot they have here today, their intake elevator, and what they take to control all of this. The, all this is coming up on Behind the Bumpers with First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. So I will pass it over to Timothy first to give us an overview of the intake and how they designed that to make it best for their team and how it all works. So this year for our intake system, we really like the idea uh, that we had last year of touch it, own it. Um, so we went with a roller bar design on a four bar. Um, we've seen a lot of different teams use four bars this year and been really successful with them. Um, the one difference is our four bar is pneumatic and not motorized. So we only have an out and in position um, into our in four bar instead of multiple different positions. We haven't found this to be a limiting factor to our performance and is increased our consistency and speed of retraction and extension. Okay. So here is our, here's the intake extended. Um, this is how it intakes a cone. We have a cone specific slot like this. And then we have a cube specific slot um, that holds the cube for us. Um, we went with this because if, say, one of our belts fails on the top roller, then we can still intake cubes and the vice versa as well. Um, it's, been, it's a pretty snappy retraction, which we've had a lot of the success and it's been really nice for us. Awesome. It's really cool how you have built the redundancy in. And I noticed you have, are those the 3D printed gears on there? And how do you, what powers this? Um, so we went this year with 3D printed gear, uh, helical gears for our intake. We originally had um, brass gears, or sorry, aluminum gears um, on our intake, but we decided to go for the helical ones, both due to weight savings, but also we could make them a lot bigger and still save a lot of weight, which both increases contact and allows us to have less slippage. And if they wear away, they're a lot easier to replace and stuff like that as well. Um, behind our, what's running our intake is we have a bag motor that's ran all the way at the very back of the intake, so it's not on our extended section at all. We went with this because we didn't, both we didn't want the motor and gearbox weight on the extended part of the intake, and we didn't want the risk for it to be knocked off by another uh, robot, and for our intake just to not be able to function at all. Um, so those are the reasons that we chose the motor and the placement of it. Thank you. It's really cool how you all have built all the redundancy. Um, this year, we went through a few different design processes for our elevator. We originally went with a telescoping tube design, um, but we pivoted away from that and stake for an elevator design. We went for elevators just because they're fast, reliable, um, consistent. We haven't had any issues with the elevator this year. We went for a thrifty bot elevator kit, um, which was really nice. We ordered it. It came in assembled it and it just worked. And that's something that was really nice for that like sort of late stage robot assembly. Um, but we've had, we've really enjoyed it so far. Having the constant force spring to reduce the motor, um, like motor pull weight has been really nice as well. Awesome, so kind of what, what improvements have you made over the course of the season? to this whole assembly, and how are you ballasting it? Because I know tippy robots have been an issue this year. So over the course of the season, our main iteration focus has been our intake and the effectiveness of the intake. We originally only had two rollers that both did cones and cubes in the same intake uh, area. We pivoted away from that after our Astral event, um, just due to it wasn't holding the cone nearly as tight as we wanted to. Um, and so we pivoted towards a separate section for cones and cubes. Um, that's, that's been our main like, iteration point is just increasing consistency and reliability with that. 
for ballast, we have a nice five pound steel bar on the bottom of our elevator that will help us from tipping um, when our elevator reaches all the way up and out um, because it does get kind of tippy without that there. So this is what our elevator looks like all the way up. Um, it's not, it's, it's pretty high. Uh, it's kind of scary sometimes. I've hit me in the face, but um, we've had a lot of fun with it. We haven't had any issues with the elevator kit, like the chain and the ropes uh, have been perfectly fine. The one thing we did really enjoy doing is going with the three-stage kit versus the two-stage. Having that inner carriage that can reach all the way down and all the way up has been a really nice addition and allowed us to um, more successfully um, score game pieces. Awesome. This is definitely a really cool design, and the uh, slanted elevator has been one of the most consistent and reliable designs. Pass this over to Mario to talk about what the programming and controls that went into controlling off this awesome robot. All right. Thank you so much. Um, this robot, we used a lot of FRC and WPI libraries to uh, manage a lot of our controls. Um, we also talked a lot with our team members to actually see how they wanted this all controlled. We automated a bunch of our stuff. Um, for example, a lot of our positions are automated, such as we have a cone position, we have a tube position, so it's easier for our drivers to actually go ahead and grab all the cargo. And we also have a double substation position so that you can actually collect that cargo and then score in whatever high, middle, or low, depending on which um, button they press so they don't, want, they don't have to actually like manually um, move the elevator. But of course, if they need, um, if they're in a tricky situation, they can of course move the uh, elevator manually via our joysticks. Um, we also have um, a self-orientation that we can head our robot. So uh, the robot will always go um, to the p direction that the um, driver is facing. So if we go forward, the robot will go forward and rel rel relatively to the driver, um, which is something that improves our mo mobility through the field a lot. And we're able to avoid a lot of different robots as well. And that makes our cycle times much, much faster. Thank you. You definitely have been one of the fastest robots I've seen on the field. I want to thank you again for doing this interview. I wish you the best of luck in the competition. You guys are looking to repeat what you guys did last year with your super unique and awesome looking robot then as well. So thank you once again and good luck during the competition today. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.